If you guys are already tired of doing daily challenges in order to unlock certain weapons and attachments in this game, which honestly I don't understand why they do that, it makes no sense, but I got the right class for you if you don't want to wait through all of that, and it is the TAC 56. Guys, we're back to another year of the TAC 56, and I'm not kidding, this is arguably the best assault rifle I've used in this game for any range, and I'm going to get more into that in a second. Before we do, if you guys could drop a like on this, sub to the channel with those nerdies turned on, and let me know down in the comments below what is your current favorite AR in this game. Minus the TAC 56 all over again, man, but we're going to get more into that in a second here. What is up guys, my name is Nick and welcome back to another Modern Warfare 3 best class setup video. This is actually my first best class setup video in this game. I did a top 5 but we're not going to count that as a one off. So this is the TAC 56 guys. This gun is probably the best in the game and when I say that, I'm not even joking, I'm not being sarcastic. I've used most ARs at long range and I notice you have to burst fire these guns in order to get the kill, in order to hit most of your shots and all that kind of stuff. Whereas with the TAC 56, you could just hold down that fire button and it is going to have barely any recoil with this class setup that I'm about to give you guys and you will definitely be able to draw people like crazy with this so definitely go ahead and use it I, I wish I could say I was joking it's better than most of the ARs that I tried so far maybe not the burst weapons those ones are actually pretty decent this time around I'm kind of happy about that but from the fully auto guns the TAC 56 is the choice you want to use so let's get into the class setup for you guys today this one is really really nice so first off I'm gonna give you guys the whole entire class everything I'm using with it and why I'm using certain things so for the first thing it's the infantry vest this gives you guys an increase in tax sprint duration and reduces the refresh time so that you could tax sprint a lot more often faster and all that kind of stuff and you could go further while you're tax sprinting i find it pretty good i like to run around the map so the infantry vest for me is actually one of the better things to use after that we're going to go over to the stun which i'm using it or the tactical i should say which i'm using a stun grenade i feel like the stun grenade is just one of the better ones at the moment i only have four unlocked the battle rage smoke grenade scatter mine and stun so stun for me is the one i'm going to be using and then we got the frag grenade as well i wish i had a semtex but i gotta apparently unlock that by doing three daily challenges it just doesn't make sense guys and some of the challenges are bugged it just it doesn't make sense i don't get that we should just be able to unlock these things as we level up and then we got munitions box and you guys are going to see in the gameplay right now this muni box comes in clutch okay i ran out of bullets couldn't use my tack anymore picked up a gun that i just did not like i did not vibe with it and then i waited out the munitions box and it came in super clutch so check check that out in the gameplay in the background and then we got the quick grip gloves now this one right here is increased weapon swap speed this is in case I got to pull out my secondary really fast. I would definitely go ahead and run the scavenger gun or gloves. I was going to say guns. Scavenger gloves if you need it. If you're not running the munition box or anything, scavenger gloves is the one you're going to want to use. I'm just currently using the quick uh, grip gloves. Then we got the lightweight boots because I haven't done my daily challenges for the covert sneakers yet, which covert sneakers is the one you guys definitely want to be running. Currently though, I got the lightweight boots, which increases movement and swim speed and that paired with the vest for uh, even more duration while sprinting. They they actually work out really really nice and it reduces noise while swimming which is not much swimming in this game so let's be honest with that i don't really see that being useful in multiplayer maybe in warzone but that's a story for a whole different day and then finally for the gear we're running the eod pad which reduces damage from non-kill streak explosives and fire so if someone shoots me with a gun that has fire bullets and stuff i'll be all right if someone throws a semtex at me that might be all right you know so don't worry about that right there this is pretty decent let's get into the actual attachments for this class though oh and by the way secondary run whatever you want I'm just running in the core 45 pistol currently without any attachments, but it is what it is. So the TAC 56 guys, luckily this time around, and I say luckily, we do not have to tune our weapons. And the reason I say that is because tuning was great. Tuning was, it was, it was all right, but it made the base gun of every single weapon without attachments completely garbage. It put so much recoil on guns for no reason, just so you could tune the recoil down and stuff like that. Whereas in this game, because there's no tuning, the recoil is already reduced on most guns. So you just could focus on attachments that you really want to put on rather than anything else. So a lot of people tell me, well, I miss tuning. Tuning was great. It was fun. No, tuning was only good because they made the base gun so bad that you had to actually tune your weapons. But in this case, the base guns are great and you guys are going to see. So the first attachment that I'm running here is the muzzle and that is the Zulu 60 muzzle. Now the reason I'm running this is because you're undetectable by radar. It's a silencer. It's great. Your red dot will not appear on the map. A lot of people seem to forget that the red dots in this game do appear on the map. Whereas this time around, you got to be running these silencers, guys, because if not, man, it's just going to be there. You got bullet velocity, which is nice. You get two, two arrows of those. You got firing, aiming, stability. So when you're shooting your gun, your aiming is going to be a lot more stable and you get recoil control helping you get those 
longer shots at those long distances. I like it. Now, you do lose damage range. Didn't notice much of that. Aim walking speed. Yeah, okay, you're going to be a little slower. You're, but if you're in long range gunfights, it doesn't matter too, too much. Aiming idle sway. Yeah, that one kind of sucks. That's when you're aiming down sights before you shoot. Your gun is going to move left to right a bit, bounce up and down and whatnot. And then you do lose some ADS, but we're going to lose some ADS. This is attack 56 made for mid and long range. Even though it's still good up close, you definitely do want to focus on mid and long range for this class. There's a lot of maps in this game where you're going to be going for long range. So make sure you're using the right attachments and the right weapons for those ranges. Then we got the barrel, which is the 17.5 inch Tundra Pro barrel. Normally on the Tag 56, I run the 12 inch Tag short barrel for ADS and uh, hip fire and tax on spread, which in Modern Warfare 2, you don't get tax and spread. But anyways, you get the ADS and all that. But this time around, we're going to be running the 17.5 inch Tundra. And this one's going to give us bullet velocity and range, which is going to be good, especially for these longer maps. Like there's that one map, I forget the name of it. I think it's like, it's just the one that you're out in the open, there's like little tunnels in the middle and stuff. It's just huge, alright? I don't like that map. That map is garbage. It is, everyone just camps with snipers and bushes. You can't do much, alright? But this gun, it's not bad on that map. So yeah, bullet velocity and range is great. You get hip fire accuracy as well. So in case somebody comes up close to you, even though you lose ADS with this attachment, you can start hip firing before you actually go ahead and shoot this gun. Now, one of the cons is the hip fire and tax down spread. It's going to spread a little more, but at least you'll be able to ADS as you're hip firing really really fast and I just don't get how you get a pro of hip fire accuracy with this attachment but one of the cons is the hip fire spread it just it doesn't make sense to me I don't get how this the bullets are gonna spread more but you're gonna be more accurate I don't know anyways it is what it is you also lose some hip recoil control so I don't get why one of the pros is hip fire accuracy it just is what it is let's move on the next attachment is the dr6 hand stop this is a modern warfare 3 attachment and it is a great one all right you get aim walking speed by the way this is an under barrel you get Aim walking speed. Cool. All right. We lost it before we got it back. Now you get two ADS speeds. So this is great. This one is awesome. You're going to be able to ADS really, really quickly with this attachment and it's going to help the TAC 56 a lot. You get sprint to fire. Sprint to fire and ADS on the same attachment is just amazing, but you also get movement speed as well. So ADS, aim walking speed, sprint to fire, and movement speed. It's 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 really great attachments, especially when focusing on a gun that's made for recoil control. None of the cons on this attachment are recoil control. The only cons are the hip fire and tax on spread and aim walking steadiness. That is it. So this this attachment is actually one of the better underbarrels in the game. I'm really happy they made this underbarrel because I'm gonna be using it on a lot more guns. It is really good, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people are gonna sleep on it, but it makes your guns fast. Alright, so definitely go ahead and use that. Next off we got 40 round mags i normally wouldn't say run the 40 round mags but it is modern warfare 3 it is 150 health you will take more bullets to end up killing people so running 40 round mags should help you guys out a lot now again obviously we're gonna lose movement speed we just got it now we're losing some you're gonna lose some ads you're gonna lose reload quickness and sprint to fire speed it is what it is you get 10 extra bullets that's the difference between a kill and not a kill so i would definitely run the 40 round mags it's a few cons but it is what it is. And then finally, for the last attachment, we got to work on a little bit more recoil control. So we're going to go to the rear grip and we're going to put on the FSS combat grip. This gives us recoil control, but it also gives us gun kick control as well. And you guys are going to see, once you hop online with this class, it's nothing like the TAC-56 that I built in Modern Warfare 2. But once you hop online with this one right here, you're going to go off on people at long range. And you're going to be like, why am I using MW3 guns when this gun is in the game? So definitely go ahead and use this, guys. It is really, really good. This class is disgusting. Again, just to recap over. We got the Zulu 60 muzzle. We got the barrel, the 17.5 inch Tundra Pro barrel. We got the under barrel, which is the DR6 hand stop. We got the 40 round mags. I mean, you could run 30 and throw a stock on if you want. I just like having the 40 round mags on. And then we got the FSS combat grip for the rear grip. If you guys like this class, let me know down in the comments below. And also let me know what your current favorite AR is in this game. I'm, I'm trying to use a bunch of them. I haven't really stuck to using one of them. I haven't maxed one out yet. I'm really close to maxing out the MTZ, but I keep using other ones, trying out different guns and stuff, and trying to figure out which one is the best one. So let me know which one you guys play best with down in the comments. It'll help me out a lot when deciding which best class set of video to make next. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like this video if you guys do enjoy it. Sub to the channel if there's no reason we're closing in on 700k. So if you guys could help me hit that, that would be absolutely amazing. And I do want to say quickly before I let you guys go here that this is honestly one of my favorite COD releases in a long time. Normally COD releases and I just, I'm sitting there and I'm playing it and I'm like, oh, this isn't that fun, you know? This one right here, oddly enough, is, is made by Sledgehammer, my least favorite game developing studio for COD, but it's my favorite COD so far. So it is what it is. Thank you guys for watching. 
Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below about that best AR. Seriously, I need to know. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Nick, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.